what's up guys so uh you know following yesterday's video with the uh micro dark which you can see on top of the pv here i'm jumping on with the pv piranha 6505 and um this is a really awesome amp it has some mid characteristics that are a little pushy you know like um some aspects of the mid i don't necessarily too terribly enjoy and so finding the right place uh, you have to really kind of try for now that's not any reason to not like this amp in fact I think the reason why it's set up that way is so that it actually stands out in a mix and stands out in a crowd so if you are on stage and, and I think you could probably gig with this if you had a 4x12 like I mean you look at the volume I have it on right now and it's running on my 4x12 and on the other side of the wall here and it's so loud like there's foam in there there's clothes in there you know that the, the 4x12 is covered right it's a Marshall vintage uh, Celestians uh, vintage 30s loaded 4x12 that I mean I, there's no way I could ever take this amp over two or three in this room in this studio setup so like definitely think that the um, the amps, both of these, are gigable, in my opinion. You know, I mean, I, I think you would need to run a 4x12, a 16 ohm, and uh, you could definitely pull it off. Now, the, the thing is about both of these amps is when you do crank them up to gig volume, you get this big mid honk. Both of them give you that. In, in fact, I, I think that the orange gives you more of a high and mid, and then the PV gives you more of a mid. And that's just characteristic of metal amp architecture. And I guess you could call it metal amp theory that you would need mid to stand out in the crowd and to you know define your tone, which is great. Um, so right now we're in the uh, lead channel. This amp only has crunch and lead channels. And I'm running through the effects loop a mini, or not, not a mini, but a TC Electronic Hall of Fame and a TC Electronic Alter Ego Vintage Echo. We'll jump on the uh, clean channel and just kind of have fun of it. I'm not having anything up front. This is just the guitar. I'm running through my 2017 Mark Holcomb PRS brisket burst with the Alpha Omega pickups. <laughs> On this amp, you kind of have to add gain to it to get some beef and girth. So I, I do actually have a boost pedal. It's an EQ pedal that I, I found was really necessary for this amp. I didn't need it for my micro dark yesterday when I was recording, recording but for this PV6505 Piranha, I definitely think that, um, I get the feeling that they digitally sculpted the EQ because like, if you look at amps like the Yamaha THR, you know, going from, going from low EQ to high EQ isn't like necessarily adding mid or adding low or adding high it's like at different intervals of the potentiometer it's digitally different settings like let's say this is a low the mid and the high like when you're here like the low is here and the high is here right or like that right and then whenever you come up to high the high is here and then the and sometimes the low on on some amps the low will be low or the low will be high right like and that's all digitally sculpted within the processing and the DSP of the amp, I get the feeling that that's what PV did here, right? Because if you read it, it says like, in order to get that 777 sound from the classic PV 6505 or 5150s, you have to like just dime everything on the amp, right? And so let's do that. <laughs> I want to say before I forget though that this amp has harmonic ringing in it that's reminiscent of my Vox this Vox right here which you can't see it's under the Vox has harmonic ringing in the sounds 
and you can hear that. And to me, that's the quality amp and the quality guitar, right? When you hear that harmonic ringing, I love it. That tells me that there's something, there's like a third dimension of tones there. See, already, I can't crank that gain too much louder. Let's just do it. bad for the crunch channel yeah that that to me sounds like whenever I am on my my 6505 MH and I'm in the uh, clean channel with the crunch engaged and then like a little bit of boost that's to me sounds like a boosted <laughs> now when I was kind of bending some of those you know 15 note and um, 17 note and 12 note and 11 note I was definitely getting some of the harmonic overtoning through my headphones which is something that I desire in an amp especially when I'm doing leads because it adds a character and complexity to it that really is only found in boutique old ancient amps designs like the uh, single channel plexis and the voxes and some of the old fenders you get this harmonic <laughs> So that, that's like the 777 interpretation that's obtainable through this amp by diming the gain and the EQ. So I'm going to jump onto the lead channel again. So that's the, the lead channel, and that was the quote-unquote DSP-generated 777 sound by diming the gain in the EQ. <laughs> that, that was incidentally very loud. I, I could hear it over my headphones, and, and I wonder if the microphone could pick it up through the wall. <laughs>
um, you know, on these amps, everybody knows that you always throw a boost pedal up front. Or, you know, like a, like a TS-808, or, you know, a, a Tube Screamer type, right? <laughs> Act like a boost. Boost on. Boost off. still hear those harmonic overtones and I really enjoy that. Let's go back to the crunch channel. I just hear them ringing it like a bell. I don't know if you can hear that, but I, I like both of these amps. Though. I used to think that they were gimmick amps, but I didn't spend enough time with them. And now that I'm spending more time with these little amps, I see the value, you know, 150, 60, 180, $200 value. They're really good. They're pretty decent. Um, you know, if you have a boost pedal up front, you can definitely get a great tone. I, I really recommend getting an EQ, I mean, an EQ pedal and a delay and a reverb because they are very dry amps to be honest both of them just throw that boost pedal on That right there is a perfect example of what I what I always call clipping the input signal. 
very easy to do on these both of these little miniature amps is like if you put too much up front it just squashes your signal and your dynamic range um, because they're trying too hard right and in order to get that big amp tone or the you know the PV tone they gotta really just goose it right and so it's already goosed internally and if you try to you know jazz it up front with a little bit of hot sauce it's like it just becomes over oversaturated really fast so um, you just gotta watch what you're doing and like and also you know we're also playing at very low volume here so um, you know I really don't like the headphone uh, the headphone uh, simulated outputs on both of these to be honest at all and so I just opt for using the amp as an amp through an actual cabinet and to me I, I enjoy the tone in fact there's some mornings I come in here and I actually still play the 6505 and I'll play the 6505 and like the lead architecture is really nice and I really enjoy it a lot um, at low setting you know like right about there it's usually where I hang out in the mornings and it's kind of you know hot dog around <laughs> I think that, generally speaking, that sounds more desirable as a tone for me as a guitarist with tube amps than like something out of my iPhone, like using a simulated amp product. Yeah, there's a ringing. I just, I can't get into digitally amp simulated things. The only digitally amp simulation that I can get into is like the Yamaha THR. They did it right. Now I haven't spent any time with the Line 6 and so I, you know, I really am not qualified for making the statement overall across the, the product line spectrum of digital amp sim. And I'm not, I've never used a Spider. I, I, Guitar Center I did for five minutes and I liked it but it wasn't like I'm taking this home. Um, I've never used a Fractal I've never used a Helix, so I really can't say that they all suck balls. But to me, 150 bucks, 200 dollars for one of these little things through a 4 by 12 and some headphones and a microphone, and I, and I'm in heaven, you know, like not like seventh heaven or tenth or twelfth heaven, but I'm there, you know, I'm still at the doorstep, and I'm and I can really get into it and kind of just start grooving along and making music, and that's what it's all about. Can you make music with this? Do you can you get lost in your own artistry and the tapestry you're creating with the sonic frequencies and you know the um, complexity and dimension of your tones can you get can you get there right and I, I can get there with both of these amps equally so so um, you know two hundred dollar amp and uh, you know very minimal cost very minimal product no bells and whistles and, and it, it's good it's good for that and uh, versus you know having to shell out a grand for the uh, Jim Root here, or six or seven hundred dollars for the 6505 MH, or over a thousand dollars for a 6503 or 05, or a 5153 or 5150, multi thousand dollars. You know, you can kind of get there. And if you're someone who only has amp sims on your iPhone, like all you have is bias, right? Or all you have is this or that, get, stepping up to one of these two amps isn't bad at all because now you're in the amplifier game. And you've gotten you've gotten out of your iPhone, or out of your iPad, and now you're really messing with tubes, and you're really messing with some volts, and that's to me where the magic is, because not every single time I turn on this amp is it exactly the same. Um, I'll be honest with you, when I was in here doing pre-video work, you know, like warming up the guitar, warming up my fingers, I had a vastly different tone because then I turned off the amp, put the guitar down, went and got some coffee, talked to my wife for a moment, then I came back, and when I turned it on, it was different. And that's the nature of a tube amp, right? That's the nature of a real amplifier is that you're gonna get a little variation every time. It's never exactly the same every time you turn it on. And that's part of the surprise. That's part of the fun. That's part of why we do this because like, you're gonna get this and you're gonna get that. And it's not pretentious. Although it is pretentious to only want, you know, multi thousand watt boutique amps. That's very pretentious and douchebaggery. 
but to have something like this and to experience some of that gives you a value that's like completely different because it's going to react differently with this guitar, that guitar, this pickup, that pickup. It's going to react differently every time. This pedal, that pedal. And that gives you like a chance to really develop a tone and a signal and, and give you inspiration. For me, at least. Maybe not for you. Anyways, that's been this video. That's the 6505 coming back to it. Maybe if I get lucky later on, I'll have time to do like an A-B comparison. But as I think about comparing these two amps, I really don't want to. Because one's a single channel amp and one's a multi-channel amp. Right, and, and, and if I would like to compare anything, I'd like to compare the Micro Dark to the Jim Root, which is even more silly because one's a Dark Terror amp and one's just a Jim Root amp, right? And then I would like to compare the 6505 Piranha to the 6505 MH, which I think would be a fairly decent comparison. You tell me what you would like to see. Would you like to see these two amps compared side by side, or would you like to see these two amps compared and this one and the PV compared? Let me know what you think in the comments below. Please subscribe, comment, like, share. And, uh, you know, let's start the conversation. What do you like best? Do you like digital amp sim stuff from your iPhone? Or do you like this? Does this sound something that you would use, sound like something you would use? Or are you still only digital amp sim? Or if you're the 5150 guy who has, you know, a real old amp like that, I mean, do you think this is absolutely gay? Um, the little amps. Because, you know, on the one hand, it is easy to come that come to that conclusion that, oh, this isn't the real 6505. You know, this is just a little gimmick. I certainly did when I bought the amp. I didn't spend enough time with it. I didn't change the tube. You know, when I changed the tubes and, you know, did a little bit like a 5% increase, like changed the tube in there, all of a sudden the amp became alive. And that is always the case when you buy a tube amp. The first thing you have to do is throw those Chinese tubes out the window and go get you some real Svetlana, Sovtech, EHX, Electroharmonics, Russian tubes because once you get the Russian tubes in there man now we can launch some missiles you know we can go to war but those little Chinese dinky tubes they just I don't know I'm not trying to sound like a douchebag but I'm just being honest anyways that's been this video I'll catch you guys later this is vlog number five